Hello, my name is Randy and I'm one of the pastors here at New Hope Church. Uh, during this period in which we are a little bit more isolated from each other, not able to come together, we want to provide some resources for you. And one of those resources is uh, to give you some, some periodic devotionals that you can enjoy. So I just invite you to grab a cup of coffee, sit down with me for the next uh, seven or eight minutes, and let's look together at Scripture. Now, in 1991, uh, Governor Evan Bayh saw that Indiana's unemployment rate was higher than he was comfortable with. It was approaching 7%. So he created the Indiana Department of Workforce Development. And he tasked that department with helping businesses create jobs and then hooking those jobs up with individuals who were looking for jobs. And the department had an immediate impact. In fact, the uh, rate of unemployment dropped almost 4% by the year 2000, but then it began to creep up again. In fact, by 2010, it was almost at 10%. So the Indiana Department of Workforce Development redoubled its efforts, began to focus more, and uh, by 2015, uh, the unemployment rate was down to about 4%. Then something truly amazing happened. The Indiana Department of Workforce Development laid off 60 of its workers. Now, it laid off those workers because they were great at doing their job. Uh, they had reduced unemployment, and there was no longer a need for them. You know, sometimes you try to do the right thing, and it ends up putting you in a dilemma. Well... In the 1980s, I went to uh, Toronto, Canada to study New Testament. I wanted to study in an institution that was not a conservative institution that believed what I believed, but I wanted to study someplace that would truly challenge me. Among all of the courses that I did there, I enrolled in a course called Mark. And the first day of the course, the professor read from Mark chapter 1 how Jesus came to the Sea of Galilee and he found... Peter and Andrew fishing along the seashore, and he called them. Then he turned to Luke chapter 5, where Jesus comes to the same seashore, and he finds Peter and Andrew mending their nets. He gets in their boat, preaches to the crowd. They cast out to deep sea, and he discovers a, a miraculous uh, catch of fish. Then he calls Peter to follow him. And then in John chapter 1, John the Baptist presents Jesus to two of John's disciples. One we don't know, but one was Andrew. Andrew left, went and found his brother Peter, brought him back to Jesus, and Jesus invited him to follow him. Then the professor said, these are three different legends of how Peter began to follow Jesus. Well, I couldn't accept that. I believe that the New Testament is history. But how was I going to explain these three very different stories? Sometimes you try to do the right thing. Studying for me at that time was the right thing. It was something God was calling me to do. But it put me in a dilemma. So I began to think about those three stories, and over the next several weeks, I began to realize that these are not different legends of how Peter began to follow Jesus, but they are three separate calls that Jesus made of Peter. The first one of those we find in John chapter 1. In John 1, verses 40 to 42, we read this. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, we have found the Messiah, that is the Christ. And he brought Peter to Jesus. Well, Jesus looked at Peter and said, your name is Simon, son of John. You'll be called Cephas, which when translated is Peter, or 
the rock. What an amazing story. Andrew brings his brother to meet Jesus, and as Jesus talks to Andrew, he starts by changing his name. What an unusual thing to do. That is not normally how I greet people. Hey, how you doing? My name's Randy. What's your name? Oh, your name is your name is uh, uh, John. Great. I'm going to call you Jerry. Okay. <laughs> That's just not something we would normally do. Of course, we know that uh, in that culture, a person's name signifies a lot about who they are and what they are. The name Simon, in fact, means hyena, a jackal, a fierce, wild dog. And when you look at Peter's personality, you begin to understand why he had that name. But Jesus looked at Cephas and said, no, that name doesn't fit you. Your friends called you Mad Dog. <laughs> I'm going to call you Rocky. And in fact, later on in his ministry, he says, on this rock, I will build my church. You know what? The call to follow Jesus changes our self-identity. It changes the way we perceive ourselves. It changes who we are and what we do. John Newton, from the time he was 11 years old, was a sailor. His father was a sailor on a ship. He brought John along with him. John began to learn how to be a sailor at the end of the 18th century in England. John was good at what he did. He quickly rose. In fact, not too long passed before John became the captain of his ship. And the industry that he had, it was a slave ship. He would go to Africa, where an African tribe would have captured a, a, a neighboring tribe, and they would sell them into slavery. And John would buy those slaves, transport them back to England, and then sell them as slaves. Till the time that he was almost 30, John was a slave ship captain. But the Lord got a hold of him. The Lord began to change him and he said I can no longer do this he actually became a pastor he became a hymn writer he wrote the hymn amazing grace then he began to work with William Wilberforce to free the slaves that he had previously brought to England what a story what a transformation the call to follow Jesus changes who we are. So let me ask you this. When you began to follow Jesus, what changed in your life? Think back about that right now. And think about what might need to change in your life today. As you respond to the call to follow Jesus. Would you pray with me? Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it is true. We thank you for the stories that we see of men and women just like us who follow. Help us today to follow you. Identify for us those things in our life that need to change and give us the courage to change them. We ask this in your name. Amen. I'd invite you, if you enjoyed this devotional, to like it and share it uh, with your friends. God bless you. We will see you soon.